and moving slightly south down to the United States. Um, maybe Pedro can help us in this. Um, I'd like to introduce David Meyer from the University of California, San Diego, and he's going to uh, give us an update about the, um, the SHARE project, which is the national project in the United States. Hi everyone, uh, as Kathleen said, I'm David Meyer from uh, UC San Diego. It's my first time at a core meeting, I'm very happy to be here. I'll just be going uh, pretty quick. I actually have two main topics I'm going to address. Uh, one is, generally speaking, the repository situation in the U.S., and then as Kathleen just said, a, a quick share of it. Uh, so, a quick note on the uh, U.S. update. I'm cribbing rather literally from a talk that was given a couple weeks ago uh, from the Center for, uh, excuse me, Coalition for Network Information. Uh, this is, was a, an hour-long talk, and it was about three minutes. Uh, so feel free to do a web search on this or come and ask me later. This is actually available as a, a video or a, an audio uh, playback you can listen to. So a couple points to be highlighted here. Um, first off, uh, in our institutions, we're working very hard at uniting a wide range of services, especially within the library, that have come to a, a fair amount of maturity. This includes not just the traditional institutional repository, but also things like archives and special collections, um, electronic theses and dissertations, uh, often specialized repositories, whether it's physics repositories or social science repositories. Uh, it's very common in our universities to have you know, a half dozen or ten different repository systems. When our users come and they, they don't know how to use these things. They're not united. They don't have a common search interface, etc. And so a lot of institutions are looking at, okay, what do we do? What's the next step to bring these things together? Uh, in many institutions, they also have their own publishing platforms. This adds a whole other layer, especially if you're working with open access publications. And then finally, uh, what do we do with the whole research data management space? Uh, this is obviously a big element. We're really pushing us right now. And one thing that we absolutely do not have any consistent answer to us is the notion of a Chris system or, or a researcher or a faculty profiling system. This is, this is very much something that is, is kind of maybe on the roadmap, sort of, for a lot of places. Uh, in the world. Uh, another thing is people are drilling back down to as they come to implement these things, ask the question, what are we actually trying to do here? And, and looking back at first principles. And, uh, the two main kind of ways this gets categorized, or two main options is, uh, are we trying to, A, capture materials that, that are at the greatest risk of being lost, whether it's more digital or things that are being digitized, um, or are we trying to capture a record of an institution's scholarly output? This tends to be driven by the peer-reviewed literature. These are often in opposition to each other, uh, at least in terms of the mechanisms that are, that are you know, supporting them, the finances behind them. In the U.S., that second one is particularly a challenge because the open access landscape is, is very, very, wildly varied uh, from institution to institution and from uh, organization across the board. And so um, what are we going to do with these policies um, if we try to look at some kind of shared functions, some kind of, of, kind of aggregated functions across our institutions? The third thing that's really driving us right now is, is repository migrations. Uh, most of the folks in the U.S. Have, who have been in this business are kind of coming up on the decade kind of range. Our software is old, our technology is old, uh, we're well past the kind of uh, burn cycle for some of these things. So there's lots of uh, old installs and old installations that are happening right now. Uh, the big chatter for us is, is hybrid Fedora. That's, that's kind of the thing that most people talk about. Uh, that's what most of the action is. Uh, it's great on the one hand because it's very much community driven. Uh, it's, it's not uh, driven by a company or a corporation, it's driven actually by the people who are installing these things. But there is still a great amount of nervousness around institutions implementing it because it does take a fair amount of staff and infrastructure to, do, to install these things in one month. So we're still in that kind of transition phase to see what is it we want to do. We're also seeing typically that even places that just want to migrate versions, whether it's Fedora or DSpace or what have you, uh, often that path is not as clean and easy as it should be, so they're doing brand new installs and they're going to stay on the same platform. Uh, and then the last thing, and this is particularly with kind of a librarian hat on, 
is there's lots of questions as, um, especially with research data, research data management coming on board, uh, what is the library's role uh, compared to the rest of the university? Uh, we've kind of carved out a niche in many cases with this, um, but maybe our offices of research want to have a piece of this, our large uh, research institutions, one of our research organizations, I should say, want to have a piece of this. And sometimes it's not clear what role the library, per se, should have in this, um, this space uh, in the university. And that's something that is in active development and, and varies quite a bit from university to university. But it's going to be a talking point, certainly for the next couple of years, as this process continues. So was, again, that was a 60 minute talk in, I think, three minutes. <laughs> so I'm happy to talk further about that. Uh, I do want to transition here and give a quick update on SHARE and where things are with SHARE. And acknowledging uh, a lot of the information I'm presenting are from uh, Rick Johnson, the University of Notre Dame, who is a uh, lead on a lot of the SHARE development, and Jeff Spee, CTO and co-founder of uh, Center for Open Science. So just uh, a quick gloss for those who may not be familiar with SHARE, uh, it's a free open data set of research and scholarly activities, metadata harvest, and the shortest way of saying it, with over 150 data providers at this point, uh, approaching 25 million different research events or research releases, so uh, items in the catalog, if you will. Uh, and that pulls from a diverse set of, of, of providers, partners, publishers, data repositories, uh, libraries, uh, etc. So it's a pretty wide uh, breadth of, of content there. Um, and then it is, a, again, a community-driven effort, uh, not just in terms of development, but in terms of, of policy and, and uh, what direction uh, this year want to go, where are we trying to get to. Just a quick note on, on current processes and priorities. Um, definitely working on, if you can kind of think of it as generation two or generation three of share, uh, it's proven that it can work, it's proven that we can harvest from all these things, okay, what do we want to do with these things, how do we want to present them, how do we want to align and, and kind of conjoin with other efforts that are going on there. Uh, there's two big pushes, and I'll have a, a couple slides in so just a second on this. Um, one is how do we get this information out to people, both who are creating it and who may not know about it simultaneously. And so we're looking very closely at how to do better tracking um, and reporting and, and metrics on the data that is in this catalog. Now, as I said, up there's about 25 million, million records. How do we talk about it? How do we share about it? How do we um, refer to it in the literature? Uh, that's kind of general point one. General point two is how do we also begin to be able to enable and or build services on top of this catalog. This rich sort of source of data, uh, what kind of tools can we actually create on top of it so that people can better use this, this huge amount of stuff. Um, and just a couple, uh, in support of those activities, a couple of things that are going on right now. Uh, Share is spinning up a, a brand new stakeholder group, which, which will be uh, kind of the management and Direction Center for the Shared Data uh, Corpus. Uh, that group has just been spun up. We actually haven't even met yet. That's how new it is. Hopefully, in the next couple of weeks. Um, as I've already mentioned, we're looking at uh, how do we uh, invest in processes to expand uh, the work that's going on in Share. Um, how do we begin to attach to other academic processes uh, within uh, various organizations and institutions? One of the things that SHARE has done, which is in many ways the opposite of the open air process, is SHARE sucked up all of this all of this data, all of this metadata, and done minimal to no cleanup or vetting or normalization of it. Um, we just have this big soup. And so now we're going through and saying, okay, now how do we clean this up? How do we uh, find out that we've got six different times, the same thing referred to six different times. And that's being led by a group that has split up in the last 12 months or so called the Share Curation Associates. These are people who are actually um, from uh, universities across the United States who are going through and looking at different ways to tackle this problem, different ways to get our arms around the state. So a couple things I want to highlight uh, kind of in closing here, and these are, as I mentioned, examples of what's being built on top of the Share Corpus, the data of the Share Corpus. Uh, one is we're spinning up the opportunity for institutions to create their own local dashboards. So to be able to say, here is the, the stuff that is being shared that has been created by folks in our institution. Uh, I've actually grabbed this as a URL. This is a live uh, this URL if you want. This is from my own campus in San Diego. 
Uh, we spent about a year working with the shared development team to put together this dashboard so you can dive into and scroll up as many different options here. Um, but the point here is that this is something we designed for our campus, but it's, it's completely open source. The code is completely open. So we have a, a whole number of different institu institutions. Um, uh, right now, we're contacting us. And we're building our own version so that it, it looks and acts and uh, to their users, it's a local service, even though it's, it's harvesting uh, and harnessing the power of share. Uh, the other big thing that is, is uh, being built in conjunction with share on top of share uh, are preprint servers. And this is um, actually slides I got from Jeff Speedy's last night. This is how new some of these things are. And uh, this is a, a, a big deal for the Center of Open Science and for the share corpus. And this is um, not specifically working in the area of open access to be able to get publications and publication related data out as quickly as possible, as cheaply as possible, and so people can start using it as soon as possible. Um, there are currently uh, six different uh, branded preprints that are available now. There's six more that are going to be coming out in the next few weeks. The uh, point here being that um, if almost anyone can spin these up, this is an open platform. So that if there is a scholarly group or a university or what have you that wants to do this, they could actually get up and running on this. Um, the two points that are particularly highlight. Um, one is there is a connection here since it is built on share. It's not just looking at publications. It's also looking at data repositories. So things like Dataverse or ICPSR or a Dryad. Uh, so that uh, the preprints could actually almost immediately point to the data and not just to the preprint publications, uh, which is an uh, important point. Uh, the second thing is, and I know Jeff, um, if he was here, he would talk about a bit, is um, what are maybe the options for doing peer review in the system? If we can get some kind of consistency here, some kind of normalization across different platforms and different domains, uh, what could be done? What kind of new science and new research could be done? Uh, so that is it for me. Uh, I'll be here in the next couple of days. Be sure to grab the questions.